So it's a great day here, lovely sunshine, middle of winter actually, and uh, you know God is just so good and uh, I want to share once again some of the goodness of God that is ours through Jesus. And this is a follow-up specifically uh, to people who may have just given their lives to Jesus. Maybe you listened to my last video um, on God's purpose for your life and how the way into that purpose is Jesus Christ who said he's the gate. And maybe you've given your life to Jesus. If not, you can do so even now. And um, I encourage you to get into what God has for your life. A good plan, a plan to bless you. So this video, this little teaching clip is just a little bit to establish, is, is, is a little bit of truth to establish you in who you are now you've given your life to Jesus. So... First of all, the truth we believe comes from a biblical understanding of what God has done through the ages and what Jesus did for us on the cross. When you gave your life to Jesus, in Romans chapter 10, it says, If you confess Jesus is Lord with your mouth and you believe in your heart that he died for you and rose from the dead, then you're saved. But that, that word saved, sozo, is it's a Greek word, okay? The, the New Testament is written in Aramaic and Greek. And that word sozo is a whole package of becoming whole, being saved for an eternal life, which starts now when you gave your life to Jesus, being delivered from evil and prospering in your soul and in your life. So it's a, it's a, it's a process in a sense of giving your life to Jesus and then the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God comes to live in you. And there's this journey we all go on into maturity in Christ to fully understand and appropriate all the wonderful promises of God. So I want to speak these truths over you. Let me just say it's important that you, you get into some of these truths. Okay, so first of all, I want to establish that when you gave your life to Jesus, what happened? So firstly, God wants you to know that you have become a child of God. Okay, you're no longer a slave to sin. You're no longer a child of the devil or of the world. You are now a child of God the Most High. You're a beloved child. God's not angry with you anymore. When you gave your life to Jesus, He has become your Father. And He's a good Father. So the truth is, He wants you to know He's a good Father. He won't betray you. He won't let you down. He won't abandon you. You may have had that in your life from your from your natural father. In fact, he will heal you of all those hurts and pains and he will lead you into a deeper relationship of intimacy as a child and a father. God loves you. Okay, so the first thing you need to know and the first thing you need to be able to say, and you can even maybe just say it now because what we speak with our mouths is creative and important. I am a child of God. <laughs> Oh, that's so beautiful. I am a child of God, and God is my Father. That's the thing Jesus came to reveal. He said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who lives in heaven. See, it's, we have a heavenly Father. So the truth is, you're a child of God, beloved of your Father, and He is working for your good in all things. So the next truth, your Father is working for your good in all things. So no matter what happens and we go through hard times, difficult times, God is working for your good. He's a good, kind, and loving Father. He's not angry with you. He's not out to get you. He's not out to punish you. All your punishment that you deserved was taken by Jesus on the cross. That's finished. Now God wants to take you into a deeper, mature relationship with Him so you can represent Him upon the earth. And the sons are sons of God representing the Father and advancing his affairs upon the earth okay so you have a purpose the other thing i want to say to you you your sins are forgiven totally actually your sins past present and future it says that god has forgiven our sins the lamb of god that's jesus became a sacrifice for us he died in our place and our sins are forgiven so that's good news. That doesn't give you an excuse to sin. Let me just say that. Actually, it is the power to stop sinning. You are no longer a slave to sin. So don't let anybody tell you you can't stop sinning. You now can say no to sin. 
you now can come free from addictions because the power of the Holy Spirit is working in you. It's such good news. We no longer have to do those bad things that make us feel useless, guilty, that condemn us to death. We can overcome. So our sins are forgiven, but not only are they forgiven, it says actually that God no longer accounts them to us and he no longer remembers them. Sure, that is good news. <laughs> you might remember them, <laughs> but God doesn't. So you don't need to keep going to him and reminding him over and over and over. You've repented of sin. You've given Jesus lordship in your life. And he's now saved you from the power of sin and death. It's good news. <laughs> See, we changed and we no longer desire to sin. We no longer have that compunction to sin, that slavery to sin. So sin shall not any longer matters for we are not under the law of sin and death but under grace and grace is God's favor grace is God's empowerment and grace is undeserved blessing and gifts from God we're under grace we're under a new system we're not under the law the sin of law of, of sin brings about death we are now under the law of the spirit of life where we live now in the abundant life of Christ so let me just say you are no, do not refer to yourself as a sinner. You were a sinner who was saved. That is not your identity anymore. You know, if you go around saying, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, guess what? You will live out what you believe you are. So in actual fact, you are now a saint. And the word saint, yeah, that's right, you're a saint. <laughs> and the Pope didn't even have to like lay that on you. You are a saint because Jesus has made you holy. The word saint means one set apart for God. One made righteous through Christ. So you are a saint. And these, some of these words you've maybe never heard before about holiness and righteousness. And, and they will come uh, and be explained to you as things go on, as you, as you get deeper into the word of God, into the Bible. Okay, So you are not a sinner. You are a saint. Start referring to yourself as a follower of Jesus as a born-again child of God. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, now lives in you because you've been made holy. Your sins have been washed away. You see, before you were saved, the Holy Spirit could not abide or live in you because you were unholy. But now your sins have been washed away and washed clean. The Holy Spirit has come to abide, to live in you. And again, that's a little bit of mystery, but you will come into understanding of it. But just know you are not alone any longer. You have the Holy Spirit in you and he will comfort you and he will guide you and he will bring you into truth. You are not an orphan any longer. You are not alone. God is with you. You are now a new creation, a new creature. You are born again. Okay, And again, you will come to understand what that means. But born again means actually... Something happened in your life when you gave your life to Jesus. You changed. You became not just, you're no longer just a physical person whose em emotions and soul controls your life and, and physical lust controls your life. Your spirit has now come alive and the spirit of God has come to live in you. You are now a physical, spiritual being. You consist of body, soul, which is your personality and your will, and spirit, which is that eternal part from God, which is now alive. You've been born again. You are a new creation, a new creature. You are a child of God. You now have the DNA of your heavenly father. Something shifted. You now have a new generational line. <laughs> this is amazing stuff. <laughs> These are truths. You're on a journey. Let me just say, not everything happens whiz bang straight away. Okay, gave your life to Jesus. The Holy Spirit has come to live in you. You are now a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's in you. And there's a journey you will now take deeper into truth, deeper into freedom, deeper into the power of the kingdom of God. Okay, at the moment, if you've just given your life to Jesus, you're still a child in Christ, like a, an infant. But you will come to maturity and that takes time. So give God space and give God time. Give yourself space and time. Don't condemn yourself when, when you mess up. It's okay. 
That's what grace is there for. Grace is to show you how to renew your life, renew your, your mind, the way you think. So give yourself space. Show yourself grace. Forgive yourself. Okay, and if you're struggling, get some help. So there are some things that you should put in place uh, as led by the Holy Spirit, okay? But uh, just as a mature Christian in Christ who's lived this out for over 30 years, I want to say there's some basic truths that you need to establish or some basic disciplines in a sense. Spiritual discipline. You know, just like we love going to the gym. Well, I hope you do. To keep fit, okay? We like to eat properly so we remain healthy. So in Christ, we've got to put certain things, certain disciplines in place. It's not legalistically, but just to help us to grow, to help us to get strong as soldiers of Christ. It's one of the things you've become, a soldier of Christ, and a representative of Christ. But you've got to exercise your spiritual muscles and feed on spiritual food. I hope this makes sense. You know, we're all like a big steak and they call the call the word of God like meat. You know, when you... When you feed spiritually on it, you grow, you get spiritual muscle. You start being able to, to handle yourself spiritually more and more. So you can do that by putting some basic things in place. You need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Not because I'm telling you to do stuff, but I'm just sharing my experience with you. Okay, and some of these things took years for me to, to, to get my head around, like, and to actually practice. But I must be honest with you, I am quite a disciplined person, just in the natural. Um, and sometimes, you know, <laughs> we also just need to learn to rest and relax and let the Holy Spirit do it. So please don't take this on as any heavies, okay? But we need to tell, first of all, I would encourage you to go and tell your friends. Tell people. What's happened? Tell people that you've been saved. Tell people that Jesus is now living in you. You see, we, we bear witness to Jesus. And what that does, it actually helps us come to maturity. Because as we tell people, we start to realize more and more for ourselves what God's done. And actually, you know, when, you, when you're newly saved, it's the best time to share the message with your friends. The Holy Spirit will actually, like, use you mightily because... You're just free, you just, and you know the good news for yourself. So go out, firstly go out and share, tell your family, tell your friends that you are now a born-again follower of Jesus Christ. Secondly, get into a church. Get into some fellowship, get into some community. Get in many different types of churches. Some of them just meet in houses, some of them meet in big mega buildings. Find the thing that suits you, okay? body of Christ is very, it's body of Christ, that's, that's actually called the church, okay? And the church is those that gather together in Jesus' name. Find a type of fellowship that you feel comfortable with, but make sure they are spirit-filled, open to the Holy Spirit, and Bible-based, and not legalistic, okay? Not full of rules and regulations, but where there must be a freedom, where they love Jesus and there's love amongst amongst them. Okay, we're not into religion. We're into relationship with one another and with God. So get into a church. Find it and attend regularly. Local church is God's instrument to bring about change in the community and to strengthen us, the saints. Okay, I have a wonderful local church. I love my church. I participate. I'm, I'm a leader in that church. And I sow into that church. And so you need to do the same. It's a community of God. We need community. We need brothers and sisters. Okay. Secondly, use your Bible. Get into the Bible. Now, it might be totally foreign to you. But my encouragement is get some help with that. Listen to some of my videos on the Bible. And by the way, if you like these teachings, if you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button down there. The red button. Subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna my channel's there to build up the saints and to equip the saints, especially young people. Subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification button so you get notice of when I when I post uh, these videos. Okay, I want to encourage you, I want to be there for you. And if you need help, you can contact me anytime you want, even if I don't know you, because we know each other according to the spirit. So get into your Bible, read your Bible. If you have questions about the Bible, contact me. 
But read the New Covenant, the New Testament first. Okay? Read the New Covenant first about the life of Jesus, the cross, about God's grace. Okay, then you can start reading the Old. Don't start with the Old Covenant because the Bible is divided into two different agreements with God. One was for Israel and um, the people of Israel and they were under the law. And the other is for us. Okay, that, let me just say that the New Testament actually is valid because of the old we don't throw out the old but we understand the old through the eyes that you know you put on a pair of sunglasses you see something in with that color you need to see through the glasses of the new covenant the new agreement in jesus christ so get into your bible read it daily i read my bible daily i love my bible i i, I it's it's a word of god okay hang out with christian friends you may need for a while to let go of some of your friends Especially if they're into bad stuff, you know, addictive stuff. You need to maybe draw away for a while. God actually take you back. I, I found in my life, he took me back to friends who I still love, even though they're not saved, you know. But there's a period where you have to separate yourself so you can strengthen your faith and then you can go back and share it with them. So find Christian friends. Find Christian friends who are living the life, who are radical, who are living righteous lives in other words they're not into they're not just talking the talk but a walk in the walk you want to find radical christians christianity is an adventure christianity is abundant life it's wonderful find those guys seek them out okay become accountable to others i've got four or five people i'm accountable in in, in to in my life i meet with them regularly if i'm struggling with stuff if i'm battling with sin or something or temptations just by the way we will get tempted but we don't have to move on those tempt in with those temptations and sin but if we are accountable it helps us to overcome so i'm accountable to a group of of men that speak into my lives okay allow yourself to be renewed in your thinking so one of the things that happens we we grew up with a certain worldview a certain way of seeing things now the Word of God, the Bible, and the Holy Spirit will start changing that thinking. You need to replace the lies of the world with truth. For instance, the world says using pornography is okay. The Word of God says being immoral and looking lustfully at women is not. So, so you need to shift. Okay, It's just an, probably one of the most common examples, especially for men, let's face it. Okay, We need to shift away from that. That stuff's not okay. It's harmful to us. Okay, so you have to renew your thinking, replace the lies and the standards of the world with the standards of the Bible, okay, and what Jesus taught. It may be that you're battling with evil spirits in your life. You know, like I did, I came out of the New Age, I had a lot of evil spirits, a lot of demons that tormented me. I needed deliverance, I needed freedom from evil spirits. If that's the case, you can contact me or others around you and get some prayer for that. I also encourage you to get baptized in water. Okay, it's it's not a, it's not like that you get saved by baptism, but it's an outward sign of an inner work that your sins are washed away, that you have died to yourself and been born again into Christ. So get into a local church, get baptized as soon as you can in water, and then be continually filled with the Spirit. Seek out places where you can go, where people can pray for you, where the Holy Spirit's moving, because it's the Holy Spirit's come to live in you, but we constantly need that encounter with Him in the body of Christ to be continually filled with the Spirit. It's a it's a bit of a mystery, but it's something we need. <laughs> I, even now, Lord, I pray for everybody listening to this video to be strengthened in you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, would you touch everyone? <laughs> would you bring joy to them? Would you refresh them? Holy Spirit, would you fill them up to overflowing again and again and again? <laughs> oh, Lord, we rejoice. <laughs> I pray a blessing on every person here today. I pray that you would open the eyes of their hearts to know how beloved they are, how righteous they are. 
how perfected they are in Christ and all the wonderful things that every hardship can be overcome, every suffering we can get through with Jesus on our side. <laughs> oh Lord, bless them. Bless them. May the Lord pour out His grace and peace upon you. Please share this video and as I say, don't forget to subscribe. And give me feedback. Welcome to contact me anytime you want. Blessings.